Island, I would do peyote for anything. Uh, I love peyote. I, I don't see much peyote. Uh, I wish I did. I, lo I really like peyote. In fact, when we first hatched the bus trip in our minds, uh, we were all on peyote. What we were doing, well, what we had done, uh, we had, Hagen, I think it was, uh, had bought the peyote order that you could order from Texas back in, in the 60s when it was still legal, like in 1963. You could send off 50 bucks and get back. A bushel? Uh, yeah, a bushel of peyote. I think <laughs> I think it came three boxes full, like, you know, cardboard boxes. He had uh, just a shitload of peyote buttons, dried buttons. And uh, somehow there was this great Shakespearean witch's cauldron of an iron pot. <laughs> Uh, it was really seriously about that big, about that a tall. Real, yeah. A real oh. old iron kettle in Kesey's backyard in Perry Lane. And so Hagen somehow managed to get it on a grate full of water and peyote buttons and kept the fire going under it for three days. The brew. And, and boiled and boiled and boiled and boiled and boiled down that peyote until it was a thick molasses tar-like stuff about that yeah. much of it, and, well, probably that much of it in the bottom of that kettle, quite a lot of it. Oh. So much so that I had in my car one of those little mustard squeeze bottles like that, you know, that has a little pointy tip on it, uh, full of peyote tar, and a box of a thousand triple lot gelatin capsules, empty capsules in the glove compartment of my car all the time. So anytime we wanted to <laughs> load up, we'd just squeeze off three or four peyote capsules and pop them with a glass of water and you wouldn't even taste it because it's not very good tasting.